with all of the wrestling shows that we've had over the last weekend, who would have thought that the best wrestling show of the weekend would be the AEW Media Scrum? I mean, I was locked in start to finish. I loved the drama. Look, let's talk about it, okay? I mean, clearly, so, you know, the media scrum starts, and it starts mid-sentence, which is very compelling. But apparently, uh, I guess Nick Hausman, who's going to go down in history as the man who destroyed AEW, <laughs> Nick Hausman was there, and I, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling to me. And we don't get it, I guess, because we're fans. But to me, I feel like, CM Punk just had this great world title match with John Moxley. And it was followed up with an even better angle to close the show and lead us into what's next. I was like, couldn't have gone better. But Nick Hausman, I, I, he works at, I think, Wrestling Inc., one of the wrestling sites. I don't want to miscredit him. But uh, he's a Chicago guy, I guess. And it sounded like CM Punk was under the impression that Nick was friends with Colt Cabana. I don't know if he is or not. But it sent CM Punk onto a path that I would imagine Tony Khan, I don't know if CM Punk, and certainly myself, had no idea he would be going down. He decided to use that opportunity to clear the air. There's been all these rumors out there that are uh, existing around the relationship that deteriorated between CM Punk and and, and Colt Cabana, and who was at fault, and who was the good guy, and who was the bad guy, and now with CM Punk and AEW, what's that going to look like? And then Colt Cabana gets moved to Ring of Honor. Well, oh, did CM Punk do that? Is that his fault? Well, I guess I'll just report that it is. And, and it goes on and on and on. Well, I guess CM Punk has had enough of these reports because he starts this press conference not by talking about the hottest angle of the weekend, not by talking about the main event, which I was informed after watching a WWE Universal Undisputed Championship match, after watching an NXT and NXT UK Unification title match, I was informed that the AEW title match was for the, the richest prize in all of wrestling, the AEW Championship, but it wasn't about the AEW Championship. It was about, I guess, what's been going on behind the scenes. And I mean, CM Punk just went in, he went nuclear. There's a pipe bomb, and then there's an atomic pipe bomb. And that's what CM Punk decided to drop last night at the scrum. Um, he basically, uh, by name, called out Hangman Adam Page. Uh, he kept bringing up the uh, EVPs, which you would have to assume is the Young Bucks and possibly Kenny Omega. And I referred to at least Adam Page, if not the others, as being without a brain, having nothing in their heads. Referred to the EVPs as people who couldn't manage a target, which, you know, managing a target is not an easy thing, but I would imagine managing a a, a, a international million-dollar professional wrestling company would be much more difficult than managing a target, so that, that couldn't have felt good. But look, okay, look, here's the... And Tony Khan is just sitting there the whole time going like, yeah, I should have clarified that earlier. It was uh, a mess, It but compelling, it was a compelling mess. I think that the problem is, so my new kayfabe meter is on all the time, obviously. That's what we talk about here on this podcast, the art of new kayfabe and where storytelling is going in wrestling and uh, why blending reality and fiction is good and how you do it well and sometimes how you do it not so well. And I have always, I've watched wrestling for a long time with this thing in my head and go, I don't know. Uh, maybe this is on purpose. I remember when uh, Give Divas a Chance was trending on Twitter. I was like, I kind of feel like they probably gave that Divas match 30 seconds on purpose to get that thing trending. I caught so much shit for it. I was trending on Reddit. I was an idiot. But my new kayfabe meter, I turned it on for this thing with, with Punk and Cabana and the EVPs and Hangman Page specifically. And let me tell you something, that new kayfabe meter didn't make a sound. No beeps detected. There is, to me, I feel as though this can't, this is not storyline. This is all real life. Now, hopefully, the only good that could come out of this long term is that it does, they do make an angle out of it somehow, but that's the way it would have to go. Because this is, this is real life. And I'll tell you why I think it's real life. 
because this press conference, and you could blame anybody you want for it. None of us know the full story, right? You could blame CM Punk. You could blame Hangman Page for starting it, maybe, if he did. You could blame the Young Bucks for whatever the Young Bucks are doing. You could blame Tony Khan for You could blame whoever you want, whatever your perspective is. But the fact is that AEW had the hottest angle of the weekend. There was no hotter angle on any of the three shows than MJF coming out at the end of that pay-per-view. And that reaction said it all. There were, I mean, it was a weekend full of moments. Every show had milestone moments. But the reaction that MJF got coming out at the end of that show, there was nothing like it on any other show. And the fact is that their media scrum and bringing real life into it completely buried their own lead. It'd be one thing if people were going to wake up on Monday morning talking about something that happened in WWE. Okay, well, let's do something sensational at this media scrum so that doesn't happen. But that's not the way this went down. Instead, they had the headline already with an angle, which is what you want in wrestling. It's good to get headlines, right? Sometimes you do something controversial to get the headlines. But if you can get the headlines with an angle, then it's it's the best of both worlds. It's the it's the best possible scenario. And that's what they had, and it went away. Because this press conference became real life and became much more compelling than anything you could ever put on TV. And that's an issue. Now we're going to get to TV on Wednesday, and CM Punk's going to be sitting there going like, MJF, it's time to settle our differences. And the whole audience is going to be going like, yeah, I really want to see what happened in that fight with you and the Young Bucks. <laughs> Like, how do you, the whole appeal of MJF was that, like, he lives his gimmick. But now, the reality is is coming into it. It becomes a lot more difficult. You know that MJF's thing is a gimmick. Even the people, like, you know he's doing a character. Because you know the difference between doing a character and not doing a character. I mean, even watching the press conference. To me, when CM Punk started going after MJF at the press conference, I was like, okay, now we're doing storyline. It was like, I that's how I took it. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But when he was like, yeah, and MJF is a prick. They want me to keep working with pricks. No, they don't. No, no, because you ain't working with Hangman Page and you really don't want to work with him. That's pretty obvious. I don't know what, what, what they're going to do. You know, I mean, apparently, so, and then there's this angle that comes out, uh, uh, the camera angle, I should say, of when Swerve and Keith Lee were up at the podium and then Keith, Swerve kind of <laughs> gets out there and starts going into business for himself a little bit too, which God bless him. I mean, if that's the direction we're headed in, why leave all the glory to one guy? No, no pun intended. Uh, why not grab some of that for yourself? And Swerve decided to get a little spotlight for himself. Good on Swerve. Not mad at it at all. But all the media people, which if you're going to have an incident, the last thing you want to have the incident in front of is media people. They see a security guard run out of the room. And from what reports are saying, apparently after CM Punk left the press conference, there was an altercation. And some people are saying there was even physicality involved in that altercation. Obviously, I don't know. I was in Orlando, Florida. I wasn't anywhere near Chicago. But I mean, if that's the case, you, it's already become public that Eddie Kingston was suspended because apparently there was physicality between him and Sammy Guevara. So it's like, what are you going to do here? And how are you going to move forward? I mean, the best case scenario would have been to let the Bucks and Omega and Hangman Page exist in Trio's world and let Punk exist in Singles world. And they can be like the who with separate dressing rooms on either side of the arena and never have to interact because they're in two separate divisions. But now we know too much. Now we want it to. We know too much. You can't. Is that going to take heat away from the MJF CM Punk story? Because we know that now that's that's a wrestling story, but there's a real life story going on. And I like what's happening. And I want to know what's happening with the real life story. <sighs> You know, do we really believe? Because now we've seen what real heat looks like with 
with with the EVPs and Tony and Punk. That's not the same as the heat between MJF and Tony, right? MJF put a voicemail in a in a in a in a video that was produced by AEW. There's a big difference between that and apparently an unauthorized set of promos and a, and, a, and a fight that broke out that we don't have any footage of. We know the difference now. You can't do a worked shoot if they don't look like a shoot because now we've seen shoots, which is why you're not supposed to see shoots. They're supposed to stay backstage. It's going to get real interesting. It's going to get real interesting. And then, like, I... Tony at the end of the press conference, and I guess, you know, to his credit, he didn't know that uh, the altercation had happened from all reports. So he didn't realize that he had pressing matters to take care of. But Tony was talking like WWE was his biggest problem. Like the fact that there were other WWE shows this over the weekend was the problem. I don't think that's the problem. They weren't running head to head. And besides that, I mean... Well, I think before you worry about what's going on on your neighbor's lawn, you need to address the fact that your top tenant, the guy who owns the penthouse in your building, just started lighting floors on fire. <laughs> like, don't worry about the guy putting up a building down the road. Some of your floors are on fire. Put those out first. Build your building sturdy, and then, then we'll get to the building next door. I mean, what a wild, wild thing to see in front of our faces. I, 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 I couldn't help but think, man. I was thinking about like at 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 Sirius, at Sirius XM, myself and Jim Norton do the morning show, right? And there's whatever five other shows. They just added more shows. Let me make sure I get it right. It goes me and Jim in the morning, and then after us, Bennington comes on, then Eddie Trunk comes on, then the Bonfire comes on. Then Nick Carter comes on for his show. So there's four other shows, I believe, outside of us. If the guy who runs our channel or the CEO of Sirius, even worse, was sitting at a press conference and like Ron Bennington for a shoot was like, let me tell you something about Jim Norton and Sam Roberts. They don't have a brain in between them. They're a couple of idiots that couldn't run a, a Target, let alone a radio show. Or if Dan Soder and Big J Okerson were up there just shitting all over us. And then the boss that we report to was going like, yeah, I get why they're mad. Like, it's like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> like, that's not cool, man. That's not cool. So, like, you know, even if they was like, okay, let's push... CM Punk went a little too far. We're going to take him out, which you can't really take him out because he's invested so much in him and he just won your world title. But regard, okay, we're going to take him out for a little bit. Uh, elite will concentrate on you guys. The elite guys would be like, uh, you didn't defend us at all when CM Punk was sitting next to you. You said okay things about us after when it was just you in the room. But my God, and and props to the media. I was glad that uh, a lot of people in the media kept asking questions about it. Like when, when it was just Tony, they kept asking questions because I think that's what you had to do. Anybody with any sort of responsibility or integrity had to do it. I had questions. I was looking up clips all night. I was trying to find out, you know, the clips that Punk was mad at and everything. It was just a, a, an insane, insane scene. And it's going to get really interesting watching them try to come back from this. And it was amazing watching Jericho go up there. Jericho was maybe at, at the end of the whole thing, Jericho might have been the highlight of the press conference. Because while like Keith Lee and Swerve are up there kind of, especially Swerve, half in character, half not in character. And I don't mind an in character. If you can pull off talking to the media in character, talk to the media in character. I've always thought if you can pull off doing the character in, uh, you know, civilian interviews, always do it. I've never, as a person who does interviews, I've never been mad at anybody who can pull off an interview in character. If you can mix in between the two, that's awesome as well. But you had Swerve doing that where he was hostile. You had CM Punk burning the house down. You had, you know, all this stuff happening. And then Jericho comes out there and he tries to be the voice of reason. Jericho has become the papa bear. 
I, I Jericho almost felt like like he was in that Undertaker role, right? Like he like like he was trying to be the locker room leader. He was trying to 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 put put people's feet on the ground. I I actually kind of appreciated that side of Jericho. I liked that that's the the tack that he took. But yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. Obviously, uh, over the course of the next week, uh, we're going to find out a lot more about what's going on in this press ground. I'll tell you this, it'll probably draw a rating for Dynamite. I, I think that a lot of the benefit will be short term. You know, people start to lose faith when they think that there's not a solid foundation. And and I think that's the difference. You know, everybody everybody talks about, well, this is good because Brett versus Sean. That was Brett and Sean with Vince in charge, right? It wasn't good when it was Hogan and Vince Russo. You know? This stuff goes bad, too. So <laughs> it'll be really interesting to see. It'll be really, really interesting to see.